Hello, friend. All right, welcome back to another episode of Call to Homeschool. Hope you're having a wonderful summer. Uh, I have been having a blast because summer is amazing and warm. And we've really had a good time. And I've actually been having a lot of fun planning my own homeschool year for next year. I'm really excited about it. And uh, so hopefully you are too. Well, it has been 15 years now. It was 15 years ago this summer that I had the wild idea of homeschooling my kids. And I believe I may have talked about this before, but I have never had a desire before this to homeschool my children. I actually had an Excel spreadsheet of one day I made in complete frustration of when would all my children be in school all day and I could have some time to myself and really think and be okay and be have some time alone. So it was a completely wild idea for me to ever homeschool my kids. So 15 years ago this summer, I had this wild idea to homeschool my kids. At the time, I had five children. My oldest, Ethan, was only six years old and my baby was about four or five months old. Not only did I have five little children, but I had some major complications after the birth of my fifth child. Apparently, when you have five kids in six years, it's a little hard on your body, and my kidneys started to shut down. When they went to go in and fix my kidneys, I then had allergic reactions to the medicines they were trying to put me on, and started having seizures, and was even hospitalized while they were studying my brain as I had seizures. So, that seems like a real good time to decide to start homeschooling, right? On top of all this, I'd been struggling with mental health issues for years, and I'd even been hospitalized twice for severe depression and attempted suicides. I still struggled with it, even though I was doing a little bit better. I can't actually believe somehow I got my husband on board during all of this time, like, I think we should homeschool. And bless his beautiful heart that he was like, ah, okay, but um, it makes me love him even all the more that he was willing to support my crazy idea. Um, so what I do, what a lot of people do when they decide to do something that is a little bit out of the norm, I start telling other people and waiting for their opinions to let me know that this is an okay plan. And as I started to tell people, I allowed a few of the naysayers tell me why I could never homeschool. And eventually I listened to them so much that I decided to sign my kids up in school. And I, sometimes I think, I think I've talked about this before, I can't remember, but um, sometimes you have a child who you can just say, like, don't touch the hot stove. And they're like, oh, okay, it's hot. And some kids can even kind of get warm and like, oh, I can feel the heat. And then you have some kids who are like, oh, I touched it, that is hot, I believe you. And sometimes I think Heavenly Father knows I'm the kind of person who has to touch the hot stove to know how terrible something is in order to do something different. And so I think he allowed me to put my kids back in school for a month because it was a completely awful experience for me. Um, it was so terrible. I had not the school, just like the craziness of it. So my kids were at a private school and my oldest was a first grader and a kindergartner and a preschooler. Then I had a one-year-old at home, almost two at this point, and a baby. I was driving to school, drop off my first grader and then come back home for a little bit, then drop off a kindergartner, come home for a little bit, pick up the kindergartner, come home for a little bit. And then some days it was the preschooler I would drop off. So I was going back and forth to the school multiple times a day. Not only that, but because it was a private school, you have to put in hours. So I had to help out at the school and I would be doing that with little kids in tow. Um, I don't know if you have like really relaxed, chilled babies, but I was not blessed that way. And so I had the cutest little whiny one-year-old who would scream and cry and then have a baby after, like I said, I've been having seizures and my kidneys shutting down that summer. So it was a total chaos. In the evening when my son would come home, my first grader, our only time together was now doing homework and it was completely awful. And I decided that, you know what? You're right. Homeschool would be better than the chaos that I was currently experiencing. So from the outside looking in, it sounds completely crazy that the Lord would inspire me to start homeschooling my kids. Like, hey girl, I uh, I know you feel like your life is falling apart and completely chaos, but like, why don't we go ahead and add homeschool to this mix? This seems like a real good plan. It made me think of a lesson from Come Follow Me this last week where it talked about the Lord inspires people to bring about his purposes. So we ended up talking in our family about how the Lord inspires different people to do different things. And as people collectively do the things they inspire to do, it 
continues to bless other people's lives and even their own lives, right? But we talked about how, and I believe it's in Peter, I can't remember where it is exactly, where it talks about how we need the eyes to see and it basically goes through the body, right? Like how important we have to have the hands and we have to have the brain and we have to have shoulders. We have to have all these different parts of the body and as they work together collectively, you can move, you can talk, right? You can have this amazing experience. And so I was, we talked a lot about as the Lord inspires people to do different things, how it makes this amazing growth, right? So it brings about the Lord's work because he utilizes your gifts and your talents. So as we were talking about this, we started talking about different times that maybe people have been inspired to do something in our family and it seemed crazy. And like, why is this happening, right? So for me, it was homeschool. Like, why in the world would you ask me to homeschool? Five little children, body shutting down, um, like severe mental issues, all of those types of things doesn't seem like a real good idea. Well, I'm not the only person that this has happened to. And we talked about how my husband several years had the desire, not desire, definitely wasn't desire, but had the inspiration that he should go get his MBA. And this felt like a completely crazy idea. He already had his bachelor's degree and his career um, does not actually require any degree, self-employed. And he does have some different licenses because he's an entrepreneur. So well, some of the things he does is with finances. So he has, I don't know all the licenses, but like his mortgage license and his life insurance license. And I don't think it's a CFP, a certified financial planner, but something like that. So he has a bunch of different licenses, but a degree is not required at all in any way, shape or form for him to provide for our family. So he has this inspiration that he should go on and get an MBA. And at this time, it was not too far after the crash of 2008, and we had, we got hit hard during that time. And so we had sold a lot of the things we'd had, we had moved out of our big house, and we're renting a house, and we were hit really hard financially. And so the idea of investing $60,000 to go get a degree that was completely pointless seemed absolutely direct, uh, ridiculous. But friends, we did it anyway. We went on faith and we did it anyway. And I remember there were times, and especially got towards the end, we met, went and met with our bishop and we we're like, what are we doing? This is crazy. And we went and asked for guidance. And he was so great and just said, you know, if you feel inspired that like you're supposed to be doing this, finish it. You're so close, just finish it. And the Lord's going to kind of show you why he needed you to do this. So my husband finished his degree. He got his master's. Um, and after that very expensive piece of paper came and we hung it up on the wall, not a whole lot changed. His business did grow a little bit, but not a whole lot, right? It just added a few more dollars in our pocket. Well, fast forward 10 years later, and now we are finally seeing the why behind something he was inspired to do at a time that it seemed absolutely ridiculous. So first off, my husband's undergrad is in linguistics something he totally loves. He loves languages. He speaks multiple languages. He loves everything about languages, culture, people, all those types of things. So all of this is coming into play as he has now grown his business. He has a um, energy company and it has gone international. So his undergrad of linguistics has totally blessed him as his love for languages and cultures allows him to navigate countries a lot easier. One of the countries he's gone to in Africa is the Democratic Republic of Congo or DRC, and they speak French. And uh, you know, what's interesting is they're a Belgium French, but then think of a Belgium French within Africa, so it's a little bit different. And my husband, because of his love and his gift with languages, was able to quickly pick up the language. And within a few days was translating for government officials and even being interviewed on their local news and able to completely understand the dialogue and everything that was being said. So he even, with his undergrad, he had to do a non-Indo-European language. And he said, you know what? I'm going to learn Hebrew. And he has worked with several people from Israel. And knowing their language and some of their traditions and Jewish culture and different things like that, he has such a love for that. And he's been able to connect with all these people in a beautiful way. So that's great and all, right? That's all his undergrad stuff that it's totally helped him now. But what about this master's degree? Why in the world get this degree? Well... Now his company is going public. And guess what? You cannot sit on a public company, maybe at least this one, I don't know about all public companies. You can't sit on the board unless you have a master's degree or higher. 
So how interesting that over 10 years ago, my husband felt this inspiration to get a master's degree that we did not see the fruits of. The reason why until 10 years later when his company is about to go public and he wouldn't be able to sit on the board of his own company had he not got his master's degree. So 15 years ago, right, I felt that desire to homeschool my babies and it seemed absolutely ridiculous. And it has been quite a ride. It hasn't always been rainbows and butterflies. Um, there were hard times and awesome times and everything in between. I have grown so much as a human. I've learned so much and my own love for learning has exploded. I did not ever think that learning could be fun. I thought it was just something that you had to get through. I have learned how to run my family and how to create a really successful, thriving family. I have learned how to connect with all my kids and how to really build solid relationships with them. Not only that, but because I've learned all these things, because I simply felt an inspiration, followed an inspiration to homeschool my kids, I now have the opportunity to share the things that I have been inspired to learn with all of you. Can you imagine if I were like, nah, not for me, and I had this inspiration and just like, nah, I don't want to do it. How many people that I would not have been able to help? How many of my children, what would my relationship look like with my children if I were like, mm, I just don't want to be with you that much, right? Like, you kind of all bug me and I, I don't want to deal with that. Uh, would I have ever cared to, like, develop my own love of learning and push myself and grow and do all these things had I not followed that? If I had, would have been too afraid to do it and give it up, I wouldn't be where I am today. And I love where I am today. I love that I know how to run my family so smoothly that it not only am I able to run my family so well, I've gotten to a point now that I can just support my husband when he travels and does all these things, that my family can just flow and there's a rhythm because I run it like a business. And so if my husband's out of town, the whole family doesn't fall apart. And it's interesting if I leave and um, my family just has a rhythm and a flow and it doesn't all fall apart because we've created such a system and a flow within our family. I can't even imagine if I weren't there to help all these other people now who are homeschooling. They're like, oh, good luck. I don't know what to do. I'm like, that sounds crazy. Why would you bother to do that? If you have felt inspired to homeschool your children, it doesn't mean that it's always going to be easy or a cakewalk. But the Lord will help you to do the things that he has asked. Because he needs you to do it to bring about his purpose. And your purpose may be different than mine, right? As I think about the things that he's inspired me to learn, my purpose right now is to share it with other people and to not only bless my own family, but to continue to bless other people's family and to really help them and their connection with their children and to create this amazing homeschool. What if your purpose is different, right? If we are all different parts of the body, maybe you're the hands and I'm an elbow. So they're both very important. So our purposes may be different. Following an inspiration requires faith. And sometimes it requires a whole lot of faith. It is through faith that all things are fulfilled. I love in Hebrews 11 where it talks about faith. And I wanted to read some of these to you. Um, through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. By faith. Abel offered unto God more excellent sacrifice. By faith, Enoch was translated. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Uh, let's see, by faith, Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet. Can you imagine Noah building this boat out in the middle of the desert? Like, holy faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should offer and receive an inheritance, obeyed. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country. Um, for, and then I don't, well, let's see, does it talk about that with Isaac? Oh, it does. Uh, through faith also Sarah herself received strength and conceived a baby, right? She was old when she had Isaac. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. Can you even imagine the Lord asked you to do that, to go sacrifice your son, to have the faith to do that? By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith, Jacob when he was dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph. By faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel. 
By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child. By faith, Moses, when he came to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. By faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. Through faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of the blood. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed. It is by faith that all these amazing things happen. I don't imagine any of these things were easy that they were going to do. I believe it even says that Sarah laughed that she was going to have a baby when she was older, right? Can you imagine the faith of Moses' mom of putting your baby in a river? Like, okay, like, here we go, right? Being chased by all of these people out of Egypt and having faith that the Lord's going to provide a way when you get to the water, right? Having faith that you're going to get Jericho. Do this, go march around the city, blow your horns, whatever the process was, right? And the walls come tumbling down. And then it says also in Ether of other people who had faith, right? It was by faith that they of old were called after the holy order of God. And this is Ether 12. Wherefore by faith was the law of Moses given. Um, behold, it was the faith of Alma and Amulek that caused the prison to tumble to the earth. It was the faith of Nephi and Lehi that wrought the change upon the Lamanites. The faith of Ammon and his brethren, which wrought so great a miracle among the Lamanites. And just continues to go through of the great things that people were able to do by having faith. I want to say, for ye receive, I love this in verse 6, for ye receive no witness until after the trial of your faith. So as the Lord inspires you to do something, you don't always receive the witness of why until after you've had the trial of your faith. So I love where it says in verse 27, because some of you may be saying, I am not the right person for this. Uh, maybe you're like me, where you've had some health issues when you were starting homeschool. And I've had some health issues throughout my homeschool journey. Um, I had some serious depression and other things going on when I was starting my homeschool journey. So whatever you have going on, maybe your spouse isn't very supportive. Maybe you're like, don't know what to do with your kids. And you're, there's a lot of fighting in your house, right? But you were like, I can't fight this feeling that I am supposed to homeschool. In Ether 12, 27, it says, and if men come unto me, I will show unto them their weakness. I give unto men weakness that they may be humble. And my grace is sufficient for all men that humble themselves before me. For if they humble themselves before me and have faith in me, then will I make weak things become strong unto them. If you are struggling in your homeschool, if you are having a hard time with one of your kids and you're not quite sure what to do, I challenge you to go to the Lord with faith and pray and ask, what is my next step? What is the next thing I need to do? I know a lot of you have told me that you just felt this call to homeschool. And it's interesting because I have different faiths of people I work with. And so some people may say God and some people may say higher power. Some people are just like, just like the universe was calling me to do this. But there's something in so many of you like, I can't tell you what it is, but I just know that this is the right path for my family. And oh my goodness, why is it so hard? And look at all these examples we had. Do you think it was easy for Moses to take the Israelites out of Egypt? Do you think it was easy for some of these other men who, uh, I mean, or Sarah, would to have a baby in her old age? Just because the Lord asked us to do it doesn't mean that it's going to be easy. But after we have faith, the trial of our faith, these are the exact words, you will receive your witness. And it is by faith all things are fulfilled. Some of you loved your school. Oh, I was trying to read my notes. Some of you had your kids in like a public school, charter school, or even a private school, and you loved that school. And yet you still felt this desire to pull your kids out. Some of you didn't. And you're like, oh, this is not the right path for me. Maybe you were like me and you needed it to be a bad experience in order to have the faith to move forward. Whatever it is, most of you were felt this call to homeschool. And there is a reason and a purpose that the Lord, your higher power, or the universe is pulling you and calling you to homeschool. So as you have faith, trust in the Lord, 
I promise you, he will help you succeed beyond your fondest dreams. I love you all, and I'll talk to you next week.